A viewer gave me this, a Lenovo ThinkPad T400. I don't know what it's covered in, but it's the most disgusting laptop I've ever seen. It honestly looks like it was left in a swamp for a few weeks. And trust me, it's only going to get worse when we see what's on the inside. Although incorrectly spelt, my name is written on the lid. I guess I wanted to make sure they gave me the right laptop, but I think it's pretty easy to tell this laptop apart from others. You know, because of how dirty it looks. You already know just how much of a powerhouse this laptop is when it's packing an Intel processor you've never heard of. Ah yes, the Intel Centrino. According to what I found online, it's not even a processor. Just Intel jargon for a laptop with an Intel Wi-Fi card and processor. But that Windows Vista sticker dates the laptop at being from around 2008. Of course, the first thing you want to do with a strange laptop that looks like it's covered in mold is to plug it in and see what happens. I'm surprised, both the power and battery LEDs light up. Opening up the laptop and pressing the power button, nothing happens. So I think it's time we take a look inside. Many ThinkPad models are known to be quite upgradable, even some of the newer ones. There's four screws I'll unfasten to allow the removal of the palm rest and keyboard. Removing the palm rest provides easy access to the RAM and CMOS battery, while under the keyboard is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards, as well as the socketed CPU. Inside the laptop, we begin to see the real extent of the damage. With the exception of the fan, there isn't too much corrosion, just what appears to be mud, or maybe some kind of drink. The manufacturing date of early 2009 is printed above the DVD drive, so I wasn't too far off with my guess. There are two expansion slots, possibly mSATA, not sure if they were for SSDs or something else, but they're unpopulated. But just take a look at that poor fan. It's almost corroded itself into dust. As I still want to try and see if I can get this laptop to work, I'll continue disassembling it, in the hopes to be able to clean the motherboard. I'm not sure why, but this laptop has so many screws. There's almost one for every person on Earth. All varying sizes, so there's little chance if I get this thing apart, it'll ever go back together. The additional liquid damage has caused some of the screws to freeze up, so that's making this more challenging than it needs to be. Lenovo did put thought into this laptop's modularity. This DVD drive comes straight out, and I believe you can actually put a second battery in here. We haven't seen the last of the screws yet. There's still plenty more to come out. It's strange, I don't know how Lenovo made a modular, upgradable laptop that is somehow also difficult to disassemble. I suppose it was good to see them prioritize the main components, but if you want to access the motherboard, you better strap yourself in because this is one involved process. It wasn't long before we hit a roadblock. One of the screws was already rounded off. I had tried undoing it, but had no success. Having come this far, I wasn't giving up now. I was getting this laptop apart at all costs. So I tried drilling the screw head off so it would allow the casing of the laptop to come free. Despite its small size, this didn't work as it was clearly hardened steel. I thought if I wiggled the screen around, it might just pull through the plastic. It did not. Instead, it just snapped the corner right off. Somehow, I feel I'm making this laptop worse, but let's face it, even if it did work, it's a 14 year old laptop I could never resell as of its extreme liquid damage. So it's not so much can I make it perfect, but see if we can get it to power on. I'll remove this plastic tape covering the motherboard before beginning to clean the bottom of it with isopropyl alcohol. Scrubbing it with a brush, I'm hoping to free any dirt and corrosion that's on the board. But the base of the motherboard actually isn't too bad, so it's time we get it fully removed so I can clean the top. Of course, there's plenty of screws, brackets and little bits and pieces that need to be removed before we can take out the motherboard. What's rare to see on a computer these days is a replaceable CPU. Something that Lenovo has been well known for in many of their laptops, 
not so much today, but back in the past, was a user upgradable CPU. Of course, the last screw holding everything together was covered in corrosion and just was rounding off when I attempted to unscrew it. But all hope was not lost. Thanks to a pair of side cutters, I was able to grab the neck of the screw and unwind it. Finally allowing me to free the motherboard from the mid-frame. I can't tell if there's more dirt on the motherboard or my workbench after that disassembly. But it's not looking good for this old ThinkPad. Hopefully, after we clean it, we'll see if it has any chance of revival. I'll take a similar approach to what we did with the back, removing stickers and components so I can clean as much as possible, giving us the best chance. Cleaning with alcohol doesn't always bring back liquid damaged electronics, but it can. I cleaned up a corroded iPhone 5 that had been through the washing machine from my dad's friend using the same approach as I am here. It came back to life and he is able to recover his old photos that had not been backed up. However, most times need to do a proper inspection and board repair. Obviously, for this old laptop, there's no point investing that kind of time into it. With it plugged in, I was amazed to see the fan spin. It was alive. However, I didn't let it run for too long as I didn't have the heatsink properly installed. But after I plugged it back in, it would no longer power on. I tried everything I could think of, from reseating the CPU and RAM to making sure I had the screen attached in case it lit up. But it was completely dead. Again. So this is it. The definition of too far gone. I mean, with enough time, effort and money, you could properly repair the damaged motherboard, cracked LCD and everything else wrong, but you'd be left with a 14 year old ThinkPad worth pretty much nothing. So while I failed at this one, it's no real loss. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.